Hi Year 5, Miss Barker here. Today we're going to carry on reading our story, Cosmic. It's one giant leap for all boy kind by Frank Cottrell Boyce. We're picking up today on chapter, I am half a world away. Dr Drax wanted all the children to move into a special crew house now, opposite the possibility building, so that they could get used to living together and to Mr Xanadu being their responsible adult. Florida got a blue crew member suitcase. I watched her running about the bungalow getting her clothes and toothbrush and stuff together and I had this really strange feeling in my throat. At first I thought it was one it was some sort of gravity related problem, but that was daft. We don't have gravity problems on Earth. Then it hit me. Worry. I was worried about Florida Kirby. After all, she was going into space without me. Who was going to look after her? I just got used to being her dad and now she was going away. I said, are you sure you're going to be all right, Florida? But she said, all right, I'm going to be famous, like Buzz Lightyear, uh, Buzz Aldrin, or Laker the dog. She was just some mongrel, but after she became the first animal in orbit, she was the most famous dog ever. They made Laker chocolate bars, Laker soft toys, and she was on postage stamps. They wrote songs about her, and she was just astray. They don't even know what breed she was, really. There she was, wandering the streets of Moscow with two other dogs. The next thing, Laker was really famous, and she was only a dog, she said. Imagine what it's going to be like for us, the first kids in space. What's up with you? She must have seen me flinch. I was thinking, hmm, Laker died in space. What if? Oh, I know, said Florida. You're jealous because you're not going. Who says so? I say so. Me, jealous of you? As if you're not. As if I am. I was acting like a kid. I know that. It seemed easier than doing the dadly thing and telling her I was worried about her. I kept thinking of her sitting on top of a 200 foot firework blasting into orbit. What kind of dad lets his child do that? Then I had to take her to the crew quarters. That was the worst bit, watching her walk away. She didn't even look back and wave. She was chatting happily to Samson too. They looked so tiny as they passed the possibility building. I thought of all the times in my life that I had wanted Fl Florid Florida Digby to go away and here I was wishing she'd turn around and come running back. It was a strange unhappy thing being on my own in the bungalow that night. I sat up on the couch watching telly all night. Sometimes I'd nod off in the middle of a celebrity seance and wake up in the middle of a celebrity dental check and then nod off again and wake up in a different episode of Celebrity Seance. When the first bit of daylight crept into the room, I thought, right, now I'm allowed to have a bacon butty. I couldn't find actual bacon, but I did find some pink meat stuff with explodes the tongue written, written on the packet. The explodes thing must have been some kind of warning though, because the minute I put it on the grill, it burst into flames and all the smoke alarms went off. Standing there in the kitchen with greasy smoke billowing around me and sirens wailing in my ears reminded me of home, which is probably when I rang my mum. The phone rang for a surprisingly long time before she answered. Hello? She sounded like she'd never heard a phone ring before. Mum, it's me, Liam. Oh, Liam, are you okay? Yeah, I'm great. What are you doing? I looked at the timetable for day six at the Lakeland Activity Centre and said, Pond dipping. We went pond dipping and I caught, I lost my place, a water boatman. That's a big beetle which has seen a steep decline in its population recently. What else? Climbed on the new 50 foot climbing wall and came down on the ever popular but very safe aerial runway. Oh, that's great, Liam. And you weren't frightened? It haven't given you nightmares? No. And are you eating okay? Yeah, food is plain but wholesome. Cooked here on the premise. We're expected to help clean up afterwards. It's a team building activity. And you're sure you're okay? Yeah, great. Really, really sure. Why do you keep asking if I'm okay? Because you've just rung me up. I can ring you up, can't I? Liam, it's the middle of the night. Oh, oh, was the best I could come up with. I put the phone down. I'd completely forgotten about the time difference. I think that was when it hit me that I was half a world away. Compared to where Florida was going, I was just around the corner. I felt really lonely that night. 
I think it must be the only time I've been in a house on my own at night. And now look, I felt bad on my own in the house. Now I'm on my own in the universe. Okay, our next chapter is called If Anything Goes Wrong. Next morning, all the dads, including Eddie Zanadu, had to meet Dr Drax in a bar inside the dome. Magnificent Desolation, the bar was called. I just have one or two more things for you all to sign, said Dr Drax, passing round some forms and also a drinks menu. These are mostly legal waiver forms, saying that if you understand the dangers of space flight and you're giving your children permission to go, so that if anything does go wrong, not that it will, you as the parents will be responsible. I didn't really want to think about things going wrong, so I just concentrated on the drinks menu. I couldn't believe it when all the others all asked for coffees and teas. There were so many drinks to choose from. I spotted something called the Cosmic Quencher, which I had to order because cosmic is my favourite word. Dr Drax was explaining that the whole mission was top secret. If anything goes wrong, not that it will. We will not admit that the admission ever took place because of course if anything does go wrong, which it won't, the bad publicity would lose Infinite Park, Infinity Park. I'm sure none of you wants that to happen. I said, when you say if anything goes wrong, well, what could go wrong exactly? Oh, you know how people make a fuss, said Dr Drax. If someone breaks a toe or gets a headache, then people will say it's too dangerous. This is our first attempt. If it doesn't go according to plan, we're not going to say it'll be better next time. We're going to deny it ever happened. Then she smiled and said, You're a man of the world, Mr Digby. You understand. I do understand now, by the way. I understand because something did go wrong. So wrong that Dr Drax probably denied that this mission ever took place. Which means no one down there is trying to help us. No one is calling International Rescue or the X-Men or whatever. No one is scrambling to a super ass rocket to come and save us because nobody knows we're here. No one knew where we were going and no one knows we didn't get there. The cosmic quencher turned out to be a bucket of coke with two big dollops of ice cream bobbing around in it, decorated with little silver stars and a bunch of sparklers blazing away in the tub. I imagined all the others were thinking, I wish I'd ordered one of those instead of my boring coffee. I suppose they might have been thinking, that is not a dadly drink, but I didn't care about that anymore. We were signing the forms Eddie Zanadu kept going on about how pleased he was that he had won. I never thought I would go into space, or rather I did. As a child, I thought I watched the Apollo missions on television. I thought I was living in the space age. I thought we would all be going to space. I was disappointed. Until now. I remember my father took me to see some samples of Moonrock when it first came back. The other dads remembered queuing up to look at Moonrock too. And that was also disappointing, because it was grey. I expected it to be glowing, like the moon in the sky. All the other dads laughed. Then Samson One said, Surely, even a, even a child knows that the moon has no innate luminescence, that it only shines because it reflects the sun. Mr Xanadu shrugged. We all make mistakes. And the other two nodded, as if it didn't really matter. But it did really matter. How could they let their kids go into space with someone who didn't know that the moon had no innate luminescence? Before you go on a quest, you make sure you put all you need. Skills, equipment, money, health, magic, elixir. What did he have? Nothing. He was just a big, grinning, empty-headed troll. He was just a... And we were here, entrusting our kids to him. I tried to say nothing. I know politeness is deadly, and yelling is not. I did try not to engage. I stood and listened quietly when he said, the important thing is that the children have decided I am the best dad and I will be the best dad, not just to Hassan, but to all of your children, I reassure you. Everyone clapped except me. Before I knew what I was doing, I was on my feet saying, well, it doesn't reassure me. How can we let our children go into space with a man who doesn't even know that the moon has no innate luminescence. How can we let our children go into space at all? Space isn't safe. What kind of dad lets their children go into space? 
they all muttered stuff about it being a great opportunity, the opportunity of a lifetime. And Samson one said, after all, Dr. Drax's own daughter is going. Well, said Dr. Drax, collecting in the forms, not this time. Not this time? No, in fact, Sheng Zhang is running a temperature, so I've decided to keep her back. It may just be a cold, but it could be the measles. Sheng Zhang can't go into space today because she's got a temperature. She made it sound like she was going to skip PE. I said, but Sheng Zhang is the professional taikonaut. Really, Mr Digby, there is so little for the crew to do. All the hard work will be done by those brain boxes at Drax Control. You know, in 1969, the Americans landed a man safely on the moon with less technology than you've got in your Drax phone. The equipment they had then was sticks and stones compared to what I've built here. So it's completely safe. We have a policy here at Draxcom. It's called massive overprovision. That means, for instance, that there's 10 times as much oxygen on board than they could possibly need, twice as much fuel. Even the layer of Kevlar on the module is three times thicker than necessary. So it's three times as bulletproof. Bulletproof? Why would it need to be bulletproof? Does the man in the moon have a shotgun or something? Oh, you know, in case of meteors. I hadn't even thought about meteors, I said. You know, thinking about it, I don't want my daughter to go into space. It's too dangerous. Yes, it would be a great opportunity, but she can have great opportunities here on Earth where she won't be impacted by meteors. It does you great credit, Mr Digby, that you are so concerned about your daughter. She was already walking away while she said this, taking Eddie Xanadu with her. I stood up and almost shouted, I'm withdrawing my permission. But legally speaking, she said, waving one of the forms in the air, you've already given your permission. Have a nice day. And she closed the door behind her. Okay, so that's our reading for today, um, year five. Um, thank you very much again for Macmillan for letting us carry on reading.